keep heading down towards those canals. In fact, that pathway is still com complete today. They've updated the canals, there's new ones down there. But if we were to continue down today, we could make it all the way to the Gulf of Mexico. But it's only a 75 minute tour, so I don't think we're gonna be going all the way there. I've been trying to convince my captains to do it all summer long and they always turn around. And very soon after the, uh, the canals were completed, well, the train lines started crisscrossing the country. In fact, speaking of train lines, here to the right, you'll see the Metro train pulling out. And you'll notice that that Metro train is coming right from underneath our next building on the right, that black and gray granite building known as the Boeing building, home to the Boeing Aerospace Corporation. And since that train line runs directly underneath there, that means the Boeing building is the first structure that we're coming to that is built over air rights. And air rights is a term for the fact that, well, the train companies had built their tracks on what became prime commercial real estate. And how can they make some money off that? Well, they learned that they could sell the air above their tracks. So the Boeing building here to the right has a 99 year lease on the air above the train tracks. And that's good for the train companies, they make some money. But it's a problem for engineers. You see, normally you just put those support pillars, those caissons down wherever you want to, but well, if you have train tracks running underneath, not so easy. In fact, there is a switching station underneath the lower half of the Boeing building, so they couldn't put down enough support columns. So they actually had to design a truss system on the top. Which I'll be honest, we don't get a great view from this angle, which is why I mention it now, and then when we come back up the south branch of the river, I'll point it out to you and say, hey look, there's the Boeing Buildings Trust System. You'll say, oh wow, that's amazing. I've learned so much today. Now here to the right, you have the first building to be constructed over air rights. And that is the old Daily News building. And it's done in an Art Deco style. Art Deco, you'll also see across about the Civic Opera building. Uh, we'll talk more about that building on the way back. Art Deco often has these long, uninterrupted lines in the windows. You especially see it on the sides of the Daily News building, which is now known as Riverside Plaza, as you can see there. And those long, uninterrupted lines kind of draw your eyes skyward, emphasize the verticality of the building. You'll also notice some carvings in the walls of that uh, building. The Art Deco style, in keeping with many of the styles of the teens, the 20s, the early 30s, a lot of decoration, a lot of design, neoclassical, Beaux Arts, all of those. But then, right around the time that building was constructed in 1930, well, the Great Depression would be coming up upon us, and then World War II would break out, and basically, for well, from the early 30s up until the mid 50s, not a lot of construction going on here in Chicago. When we did start building again, well, taste had changed, frankly. Now the popular style is the modern style. This is what you see at your right. Uh, these are the first of the gateway buildings from the early 60s. Simple, undecorated steel and glass boxes. And uh, since we had Mies van der Rohe here in the city, a lot of designers were influenced by him. The idea behind these was that why they consider it the international style that, well, you can put these buildings in any city in the world and they would fit for the club. But these are once again constructed over air rights. So you can see the active train lines there. Uh, Metra, by the way, is a local regional rail and it takes you to our near suburbs. But also the Amtrak train station here. Amtrak can take you all across the country. And they're here for Union Station. Uh, Union Station, by the way, is a classic train terminal. If you have a chance to visit it, I really recommend you do. Uh, especially if you like movies. If you've ever seen The Untouchables, one of those great Chicago movies, they film the climactic scene there where everything's like in slow motion and there's a baby carriage bouncing down the stairs. It's great, you can go ahead and recreate it from there. But don't actually recreate it, I'm not. Uh, please. Uh, here to the right, that uh, black lower building with the X's on it, well, it's now the Fitness Formula Club, but it was originally the Mid-American Commodities Exchange. And the Mid-American, well, they wanted an open trading floor. So to accommodate that, 
the designers of the building took the support columns that might run down the center of that uh, building and put them on the outside. So that's what you get with those X's there. And it's also a great example of structural expressionism. And structural expressionism kind of goes hand in hand with the modern style. And basically, it just means that, well, the modern architects, they didn't want to hide the structure of their building behind decoration or windows or facade. They put it right there on the outside. But even within the modern style, there's going to be changes. There's going to be evolution. And that's what you see here to your right. The last of the Gateway buildings, Gateway 4 from 1983. You can see it is in that simple glass and steel box, but, well, it's starting to get some additions there. Um, you have more of a bubbled, reflective quality to the glass with it. Also, you have less steel on the outside. So that's really why I love this stretch of the river. Um, you have a postmodern building, like the Bowen building, right next to an Art Deco style, right next to all of these modern gateway buildings. And even within the styles of the gateway, you're seeing changes in different tastes. To our right here, as we're waiting to get past the construction, doing some work on the Van Buren Bridge, you do see the beginnings of the old post office. That's that Art Deco building rising up there. We'll get some wonderful views of it. And, well, yeah, it does look kind of old and run down. The building has been vacant since the 1990s. But when it opened in 1921, it was the largest post office in the world. And it's done in an Art Deco style by Graham Anderson Herbst and White. And there's a very important reason why we needed a post office that large back then. And that's because we were the mail order capital of the world. We had Sears and Roebuck, Montgomery Ward, based here in Chicago. And for those of you who may have forgotten, uh, well, how important mail order was in this country, or maybe you never knew, it, well, you can think of it as the Amazon of its day. Uh, instead of the internet, these companies had magazines. Send them right to you. You can pick out whatever you want, their catalogs, have it delivered right to you. It really revolutionized retail. By the way, just to emphasize how large that building is, realize that Congress Parkway goes directly through that building. In fact, when they opened the old post office in 21, uh, well, Congress Parkway didn't exist yet, but they knew it was coming. It's actually called for in the 1909 plan of Chicago. Kind of this all-encompassing plan that a lot of things were implemented. So the designers of the post office designed it with a gap in the middle to accommodate that future roadway. Because as I mentioned, uh, Chicago has a tendency to just kind of knock through your building if you're in its way. However, by the time you get to the 90s, well, a multi-story post office of that size just wasn't the most efficient design. You see, it actually took a lot of time for the mail to travel up and down in the elevators, and ultimately, they decided to vacate it. And at that point, they moved all the way across the street here to the new post office on our right. And this new, new post office has a single floor where they do all their sorting. In fact, they had a big grand opening ceremony when they first opened this post office. And the trucks started rolling into the garage, everybody was watching, and the trucks got stuck. You see, apparently, uh, they forgot that trucks tend to have tires with air in them, and they could not fit through the garage. Uh, so they had to go ahead and deflate the tires to get the trucks inside. They would eventually fix that, but it was quite an embarrassment when they first did it. Now, the old post office has sat vacant since the 90s, uh, almost two decades now. And uh, it's been used for a few, mu few movies. The Transformers movies used it, as well as The Dark Knight. I'm sure a lot of you have seen The Dark Knight. Uh, the bank that the Joker robs at the very beginning is actually robbing the post office. So uh, it was purchased a few years back by a British investor. He had some big plans for it, and unfortunately the funding hasn't really come through. 
but he did announce a few weeks ago a partnership with a firm that specializes in rehabbing old buildings. So it looks like something's finally going to start with it. Yeah, we're very happy about that. Woo, yeah. Um, we'll see if it happens, because he said it before. Uh, but there, it is a historic landmark, so they can't tear it down. They can clean it up. They can also build around it. Now here to the left, this unique building is River City. And it was designed by Bertrand Goldberg, same architect of Marina City, those corn cob towers. And even 20 years after Marina City, well, Bertrand Goldberg still doesn't like 